there is an unusual grace God gives me when men try to fight me. Oh, I become a I grow. When you see a pastor and you can count up to five pastors, he has criticized. It was the birthday of Pastor Chris Oyakilome. Happy, happy birthday to the pastor. It was quite eventful, I would say. The governor was there, Song Olu was there, Apostle Johnson Suleiman, famous for this particular video. Pastor Chris is not my friend. In fact, the title itself was like controversial until you had to hear what he said about Pastor Chris that he is in another world. In fact, it's not just like a regular pastor. He has millions of people that gather in his ministry when he has programs. Pastor Chris is indeed a very well-known man of God. Yes. And of course, Prophet Hubert Angel was there, as well as many people. I saw it on Instagram. It was trending everywhere. And I thought to share you with you people so that those of you that don't know the news of what is happening, you know, what is trending, you also get to know. But this is not the main subject of today's video. Recently, we have been discussing about the subject of, okay, criticism in the church, correcting in the church, and of course, things that get to generally happen on this channel. Now, I don't blame most of you who didn't watch the previous video of course even youtube told me oh many of your audience refused to watch a video like you see right here is that my problem no my one is that i share with you what i think you need to see it's your choice to decide to see it or not see it but when someone comes in the comment to talk from their nose i'll just refer you to that video that is it so i came across this video by one of Apostle Aremo Osai's son, I think he is an RCN Kaduna, somewhere in the north there, I believe so. And he said a couple of things I found quite interesting, which I'm going to connect the pieces to it. But first of all, I would want you to listen to him as he says what he has to say about Apostle Aremo Osai in a subtle way, but of course about some things you have been discussing right here on the platform. Peter 2, 1 and 2. But there we have false prophets also among the people, uh -huh. even as there shall be false teachers among mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. who privily mm -hmm. shall bring in damnation, heresies, yes. even deny the Lord that brought them, yes. and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Verse 2, the emphasis. And many shall follow their pain. Um, how, many, how, many, how many shall follow? Many. How many shall follow? Many. Now, the, there's a big deception in the body of Christ that if you have larger crowds, you are right. So when the man that has truth start talking about what is not right, they will say, if you have not achieved what they have achieved, keep quiet. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. That word there, check it out in the dictionary. Is a harmful way that comes gradually. It's not harmful at face value. But if you stay long enough, when you arrive at the end of that journey, you are already in harm. Many shall follow those. The, the harm is it's like giving you sweet that is coated or bitter leaf coated with sweet. Many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of the truth of truth shall be evil spoken of. <laughs> we're here now. Jerry, we're here now. So if I speak and say, ah, do not check me out. I don't have followership. I don't have a big church. You say, if I'm going to achieve what you have achieved, then shut up. When did that begin? Have you not heard Ahab was to go to war? And he called 400, how many? Prophets. Prophets, I'm going for war. Tell me the outcome. Go, you win. Go, you win. And the one quiet church that doesn't have PA system, no last followership, Makaya, church, Makaya prophetic church, local. Mm, not, not look at he not said go up king you prosper he knew he knows or he knew that Micaiah was 
the only man that always told him the truth. And for the first time, Micaiah's utterances was like the other ones. He now knew that, ah, you are lying to me. Didn't I tell you not to lie to me? He said, okay, since you want the truth, <laughs> you will not prosper in this journey. He said, I told you guys, I told you guys, he doesn't like me, he hates me. But you asked for the truth. And one prophet, one senior prophet, Bible says he came and smote Micaiah. He slapped the guy, I guess, or smote him, hit him hard. How did God bypass me that he spoke to you? How can God leave prophet XYZ and talk to small apostle Aramel side? You are too small. That's what we are now. We are under attack. A man has arrived, a voice of I'm not preaching apostle. Aramel. You know, I'm not preaching a man. I'm preaching the belief. The voice of one. Is it is is it bad to say amend your ways? He's coming. Is it bad? Did he ask for money? Amend your ways. <laughs> That's all. He didn't ask for money. You, you ask for money. You you do miracle store miracle money. He didn't ask for miracle. He just amend your ways, and that's the problem. I have news for those people. We are many. <laughs> we are many. In case you don't know, Apostle has been asking us to keep quiet for a long time. He has he's not be back up and said, No, I didn't say you should defend me. He has told us that face to face, don't defend me. I'm not defending him. I'm preaching our convictions. Go up, King, you prosper. He said, Don't lie to me. He now said the truth. And a prophet smoothed Micaiah. How did God leave me and spoke to you? It's as though is by order of age is by order of big ministry is by order of big money king now said lock him no, not so lock him feed him with the bread of affliction till i come back and i imagine makaya with his hands through the bar is it the bar now what now the bars if they were if they were bars Oh king, if you come back, the Lord has not spoken. And man's wisdom came into play. The king now disguised and didn't wear the royal apparel just to be lost in the crowd. And the Bible said the enemies were looking out for the king and didn't know that he was in the midst of them disguised. And as the war increased, the fight increased. He says somebody adve adventure by chance if you call it adventure at random just pulled the arrow and he shot and the holy ghost took the arrow and kept navigating to find ahab because his word must not fall to the ground his word must come to pass the guy might be a genius staff bed because a prophet who was aligned to Jesus spoke. God took the arrow by his spirit and smote the king. Africa will be overrun by the truth. The issue of death threat, we are dead already. We are dead. We are many coming. This truth must be preached. This truth must be declared with our lifestyle and with our spoken words. We will say the truth. Now, I hope you took your time to listen to that. And it's really true what he's saying. Let me give you examples because if I don't give you an example now, you start saying, oh, nyo, nyo, nyo. Now, I'm not saying that he's saying this because of Apostle Suleiman. This one video where Apostle Suleiman was saying that, you know, for you to be able to correct or maybe question what a general has done, you have to have a proof of ministry. Let's listen to it right here. And number four, those who are attacking ministers, what is their, what is their testimony? 
before a man of God begins to attack another man of God and you listen to him what is his testimony how long has he been in ministry how long has he proven his ministry before we listen to you attacking people you must have a long track record if somebody like pastor Adeboye that the Chiyo comes to speak about something we will listen because he has a proven track record over the years at least 50 years is okay to prove a ministry 50 I know you're going to say apostle but the Bible says out of the mouth of babes and suckling finish it out of the mouth of babes and suckling thou has ordained praise not correction he ordained praise not correction he didn't ordain correction from babes and suckling so don't quote the scripture emotionally he ordained praise out of the mouth of babes and suckling okay so we must be careful you can never get it right by attacking the minister you always miss it i saw somebody um um a video somebody sent it and what he just said uh, he sent something and wrote something i can't remember a minister was talking to about another minister who was um involved in the national crime according to him and he says since that time that minister has not left the pulpit so this is one thing as well that is really really common i see happening in the church because your amount of followership or what i see your amount of you know how big you are defines to a great extent the authority of the things you say or would i say what you say having to hold weight let's say for example the one that is known for you know pastor chris saying that um master bullishon is not a sin there are different opinions on that but because of the person that is saying it the followership the attention the proof of ministry like he would always say because actually for Suleiman in that video was talking about what is a testimony of Aramo Osai because he's known to be someone that is seen to be correcting issues that are in the body of Christ but let me tell you guys something so you get to understand the full perspective you see when people like Aramo Osai or maybe 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 other ministers of God decide to talk about trending issues that are happening in the church it's not really because of the person most times you understand like let's say the subject of miracle money I keep using this particular example. Ubat Angel, Miracle Money. Pastor Chris, Miracle Money. Apostle Suleiman, Miracle Money. NHA, Miracle Money. Even let me show you another recent Miracle Money. It has even gone further than that too. We have many upcoming people doing. Uh, this one is another one. Yeah. Please, bye-bye, check them, check them. Check all the lights. <laughs> the guy at the back, he can't even pretend that this is real. The way he's just laughing at the whole thing. He's like, chai. <laughs> the way he's just shaking his head. <laughs> People are, miracle money is entering everybody's hand. And you that is a pastor's assistant behind. <laughs> you are laughing. <laughs> okay, wait. Watch the video. Okay, watch the video. Watch the video. You don't know what you meant, huh? What you meant, huh? What you What you meant, huh? Look here, please. Obi, look here, please. Some people don't believe that. I want to talk about it. Obi, you are not sure. Hundred, a hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. This is easy. Ah, please. Obi, I don't know what. I don't know what. Hundred thousand. Yeah. Obi, we are not even this far. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Now, some of you will not understand this one because it is in Yoruba. But uh, the, the, the issue right here is that, I don't know, I've made about three to four videos on Miracle Money explaining it. And someone will now be writing in the comments, oh, Miracle Money is real, Miracle Money is real. If you have not watched my previous videos on the particular subject of this whole Miracle Money thing that is trending everywhere, you will never even understand what you are calling miracle, if it's really a miracle, or if it's the understanding for which I broke down on that particular subject. Wherever the money is coming into, into your account, if that particular amount is traceable to an identified person who intentionally sent the money to you, whether it's by declaration of pastor or declaration of a prophet or whoever, that is in principle. So it is now left for you to say, my pastor declared and then this person was quickened to send me money. If you are calling that one miracle money, congratulations. But if you are telling me that the money came from nowhere or it came from heaven, like heaven sent the money into your account and it's not traceable to anyone who intentionally sent the money to your account that has BVN and everything. One I'm just giving you the real facts right here. Let me give you an idea here, okay? If you want to really, you know, make it align with the scriptures, just like most of you would say, your pastor should tell you to go home. That chicken that you have bought for Christmas, Christmas is here, go and open the mouth. In fact, by the time you open the stomach of that chicken, you will see $5,000 inside. Because the instance for which you people used to do miracle money is talking about Peter and the fish. So, so use that same analogy there and then maybe try to recreate something in that line. Isn't that going, isn't that going to be more convincing of the miracle money you claim? <laughs> So Aromosai has his own defense, but for me, I didn't come to come. I didn't come to just oppose scriptures with you when we do, looked at that. I looked at the main performance of the miracle and exposed the shenanigan stuff that was happening there. Simple and short. If you hadn't watched the video, the video is still here. What point am I trying to make you understand right here in this particular video? You have to know that. To some great extent, when he talked about that, the fact when he said that many are coming, it seems to be that Apostle Aramosai has an I won't say an army, but with those who are followers of his ministry, or would I say pastors under him, if you notice clearly, like Kesiana um, on Twitter is uh, on Twitter is Irem. Now I'm getting to know about this one. I know Apofure. I know many of them. I'm beginning to see them pop up, pop up here, pop up here and there. And of course, one thing that gets to bring attention to their person is when they also get to comment or would I say bring light to trending Christian conversations. So most times, and that when we talk about this subject of criticism. Like Michael Oropo will say this. So when we correct error, we are not attacking people. I don't attack people. You know, there's a move, of, a move in the body of Christ now where everybody wants to attack somebody and they think it is boldness to call somebody's name and to attack him. 
And when you talk, they quote scripture. See, I will do a teaching on that someday, but not now. But you see, most of these things are wrong. You can attack what is wrong, but you don't have the, the clearance to attack somebody. Because that person might even be wrong when you are talking. What if the person re repents? So you have shut the door of the body of Christ to that person. Whereas all of us at some point were involved in something that was not of God. Some of us were liars. Some of us were manipulators. Some of us were fornicators. Some of us, we had many things. God picked all of us from different gutters. And so we're, at, attack what is wrong. Let your people know the difference between good and evil. You see, when you are criticizing something that you know, or would I say bringing correction to something you know is trending in the body of Christ. For me, remember I always tell you, there is body of Christ and there is body of men. When you get to address things that are happening in the body of Christ, you don't have to really focus on the men, even though people like us will bring perspective to what you are saying to make people really understand better for those who don't understand. But there's no way you get to criticize a particular trend that it does not touch the people who are propagators of that trend. That's how come it looks as if people are being criticized. But in the real essence, it's not really about the people. Most times it's about that particular thing because when that particular thing is not being maybe criticized corrected just opposed whatever they become a proliferation of that look at let's say Hubert angel now after doing his miracle money thing in nigeria we looked at it and then even doing the credit score miracle he did at his church probably he, he may not write try that particular one again his confidence in that particular miracle is that pastor chris has done it oh Polynesia have done it. Oh, Suleiman have done it. So there are many other credible people who would be seen to have proof in ministry, following, popularity, trending, you know, branches here and there, big ministers who have done the same thing. So what is your proof as you that is criticizing this particular miracle money thing? I don't know if you understand. And this now makes you wonder to yourself, is it really the body of Christ or the body of men? Because right now it's all about who is most popular, who is who has been in ministry longer, who can be corrected and who cannot be corrected. But let me also tell you something as well. Where I stand in the part of like correction and all that is, if you know the person personally, one and a half hour waiting to happen. Just like Apostle Suleiman was saying that he talks to Hubert Angel and Hubert Angel told him that he spent five weeks without ministry some of us we know how far now go and ah, the data is there go and check the data yourself when it comes to that particular subject what is in the public space would also attract public commentary on that because the essence is that when you are correcting something in the public or addressing something in the public you are addressing it because of the name with whom that particular thing is being done and to some extent stray bullets can hit people that don't expect it to hit them so that maybe those who are planning to toe the same line will know the criticism that might come to doing that same thing again. So do I have an issue with Apostle Aramosai on his, you know, public outpour on some trending issues in the body of Christ? He said that he has a mandate. Listen. Uh, you will not know that I don't study the dictionary for English. <laughs> Oh, he gave me vocabulary, such vocabulary that has the capacity to carry the revelation he has called me to communicate. The moment I know what God wants to say, I don't look for the words. Because he put his words where? I have so much confidence in that, that grace of utterance, so much. It's when I teach on the book of Revelation that you will know that, yes, this man, they, they put something inside the words the words to communicate the mind of god in simple plain language that jesus would have done if he were physically present teaching us he came to me by i don't want to take you to first uh, corinthians chapter 2 to explain that scripture more but then after he gave me all utterance he now said see I have this day set thee over nations. This is where I discovered that I had an international ministry. 
over kingdoms. To root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. Can you see that four of his activities were destructive? Only two were constructive. Can you see? You are not following me. You are not. Uh -huh. That's why, that's how my ministry is. When somebody comes and is beginning to build falsehood in the body of Christ, I can't sleep. Until I break it, I can't sleep. Because I'm called to do what? To root out, to pull down, to destroy. Some people try to attack me because, that is physically, because I scattered the falsehood they were building. They died overnight. Because I was not doing it. It was not me doing it. It's my calling. I, it, the great one called me to do it. Who am I? My calling empowers me to have that authority in the body of Christ. And that is the reason why I paid the price in terms of physical discipline to live right. So that I can have the moral latitude to tell you that you, that you are in sin, that you are in darkness even now. Are you there? Now, so, 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 it, 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 to pull down, to destroy, to throw down before we build and plant. So I'm also a builder and planter, but I'm a destructive instrument. And I understand myself very well. And, and God told me that this kind of ministry, you are going to be persecuted. So I'm at home with persecution. It's part of the, what? The package. If you don't know the anointing you carry and the errand that the anointing is sent to accomplish, you will cry behind the cupboard. There is an unusual grace God gives me when men try to fight me. Oh, I become anointed. I grow. Because it is part of my calling. Who are you? Have you found your scripture? The scripture that reveals your identity. That's why you don't know your battles. That's why you don't understand your seasons. That's why you don't know your cycles. That's why you don't understand the ammunition that Satan is using against you because you don't know who you are. The people that came for John said, what do you say about yourself? Many people have said many things about you, but now, what are you saying about? Remember, Babylon wants to give you another identity so that you will live off a different perspective that is incongruous with your destiny in the kingdom of God. Are you there? So the anointing that you carry, the understanding of that anointing gives you an insight into your description in the kingdom of God. And look at what Apostle John Suleiman said, that he himself hears God, and God did not tell him that or anyone that if i'm to be direct because when these people speak they don't get to call names but they know exactly what they're talking about i saw something that looked like a video of um, someone he was preaching on the pulpit i was attacking another man of god he said the man of god committed the national disgrace until now he has not repented that the man of god didn't, didn't leave the pulpit the man of god should have left the pulpit that now he has not left the pulpit and the person he's talking about left the pulpit for five weeks it was his son that was preaching for him attacking the guy I was ashamed. Because you now that just lied on the pulpit, should you also leave the pulpit? You see, there are people who naturally, when you see a pastor, and you can count up to five pastors, he has criticized. He's a bitter person. It's not the pastors that have problem. It is him. He has, he's a bitter, he's a naturally critical person. And people like that, those around them, is an atmosphere of toxicity. It will be an atmosphere of report to report, 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 report. Because once you like gossip, people will always bring gossip to you. Once you talk about people, you talk about people a lot. People will always bring gossips. Report, report, report. You stand. All you talk about is other pastors. Have you lost your calling? It's a strange fire. Leviticus chapter 10 is a strange fire. This is not who we are. We don't condo, we don't condo offense, but we love the offender. Stop thinking that are uh, uh, standing with people. What do you know? People, people mistake social media acceptance for greatness in ministry. Social media acceptance is not greatness in ministry. It's not. It's not at all. You are mistaken.
You pray to God to give you a platform. You pray to God to make your voice heard. You pray to God to make you a voice in your generation. Now God has given you a platform. You use it against God. And don't let anybody tell you that God gave them a mandate to start correcting. It's a, it's a lie. I mean the prophetic. It's a lie. God does not give people instruction to cause confusion. You know, when they, when they want to have control over a certain people, they say, God said. Those who hear God are the ones telling you now that God didn't say. Because when you know the voice of God, when you know the voice of God over the years, you now understand the character of God. So if he's saying that he hears God and then God did not give any mandates when it comes to criticism and calling out issues in the body of Christ, look at what is going on right here. So who do you stand for? Apostle Joseph Suleiman that has many of his testimonies and proofs? Uh -huh. Or Apostle Aram Osai that has also his testimony and proofs? <laughs> Are you getting the point now? But you uh, speak to that. Ah, bro, I'm talking to the person behind. Did you get it? You understand? Thank you, my brother. So, anyway, you could tell me what you think in the comments right here because me presenting these facts for you is for you to really sit down yourself as a Christian on the other end. What do you see really going on right here? Is either you decide to stand on the authority of God's word, stand for truth? Or decide to just be bamboozled by what this man say, what this man say, what this person say. If you had not watched my previous video on this subject of criticism, would I say a balance on it with uh, Pastor Itaudo? Go back and watch that video. It's one almost two hours long video. I would ne That's the longest video I have ever uploaded on my platform because I tried to cut it like 10 minutes, 5, 15 minutes, max 30 minutes like I would do my videos. But I was like, if I cut it, probably I might be amplifying something that will make you misunderstand the entire counsel of that particular interview. But either ways, it is your choice. I will not force you. Till I see you next time, the name is George Wadner.